panel out of time. So where do you stand on our Second Amendment rights? <laughs> Still with his license. I've got one to match you. My purse is right behind you. Card or a gun? Change the cards. President Obama's assertion that a Supreme Court ruling that Obamacare is unconstitutional will would be unprecedented. You know, I, uh, I was never a constitutional scholar. I never taught constitutional law. I never went to Harvard. I was not the president of the Harvard Law Review. You know, I just went to Air Force School. And things are pretty simple. Red light means you don't jump. Red light means you jump. <laughs> But I looked up this little thing called Marbury versus Madison, 1803, Chief Justice Marshall, which established judicial review, which has been in place for 209 years. It is the responsibility and the mission and the duty of the Supreme Court of the United States of America to interpret laws that have been passed against the supreme law of the language and constitution. And in those 209 years, Supreme Court has overturned close to 150 laws that Congress has passed. So again, I was born and raised in Georgia. I went to a simple little school called the University of Tennessee. I used to pull a rope on a big gun called an artillery piece and went and made a loud boom. But I don't know what the president's talking about. <laughs> to increase tax at the expense and removing of one of your fiscal tools, taxing policy. Okay, well let me tell you how that happened. In 2007, there some people called and asked me to run for Congress. Some folks sent me that tax place and I signed it in 2007. I was sitting in Kandahar, Afghanistan. And uh, when I got back in 2008, because I did run for Congress in 2008, I did submit it into uh, Americans for Tax Reform. When it came back, when I was running 2010, and Mr. Norquist and Americans for Tax Reform asked me to sign it again, I did not sign it the second time. So if you want to count it when I signed it in 2007, there's some type of buying agreement that's fine. But let me tell you the bottom line. I'm not going to go to the American people and ask for one stinking penny until we get our fiscal house in order up in Washington, D.C. You guys are You guys are tightening your belts. You guys out there in small business are trying to find ways that you can become more efficient. There are certain people out there that are small business owners that aren't paying themselves. I'm not going to reach down and tell you, give us more money up in Washington, D.C. so we can waste it all over again. That's what I stand by, and that's what I will continue to do. We get our fiscal house in order. We reduce our debt. We reduce our debt to GDP ratio. We show the American people with honor, integrity, and character, that we will be good stewards of your taxpayer resources, then I'll come and ask you to send us some more money. But until that day, I'm Just as a heads up, we only have two questions left, and the time has run by. The next one, sir, is what do you make of the president asking Russia to wait till after election? <laughs> I don't know what flexibility means. All I know is that this is the second time that you know, the President of the United States, the Commander in Chief of the United States of America, has whispered, quote unquote, off mic to a foreign leader of another country. We did that with President Sarkozy of France, mm -hmm. saying some very uh, negative things about Prime Minister Netanyahu. And I don't know what flexibility after the election means, but this is, like I said, Economic security, energy security, national security. 
real Navy one cut and deals with uh, Vladimir Putin. Who wants KGB? Yes, yeah. always KGB. <laughs> Last question. Thank you again for coming here today. It was my honor to be here. Thank you. What is your opinion on dissolving the Republican Party or the Democratic Party or creating new major parties in government? Uh, you know, most people, you got folks already mad at me, you know, and I don't want to go dissolve the parties. I mean, right now, I mean, everywhere I go, I got people from the Democrat Party tracking me and following me around. Sometimes they try to follow me in the porta potties, like, <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the race. Look, Plato put it very simply. Plato said, those who refuse to participate in politics shall be governed by their inferiors. It's not about me dissolving parties, or as George Washington and many of our founding fathers called <laughs> factions. It's about the American people once again understanding that this is a republic, and there are two things that are preeminent in a republic. Number one is the rule of law, and that's our constitution. Number two is the respect of the rights of the individual. That's what Thomas Jefferson wrote about when he said that you have inalienable rights that come not from man, not from the government, but from a creator of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yes. Which if you go back and you read John Locke, the pursuit of happiness meant property. What you have to understand is this country is your country. This government is your government. This political process, the democratic process is yours. Think about who you sent to Washington, D.C. and ask yourself one simple question tonight. The people that you send to Washington, D.C., are they truly a reflection of you and your values? Yeah. And truly a reflection of the principles and values of this great nation? Because they are not going to be in Washington, D.C. unless you send them there. So it's not about me dissolving parties. It's about you participating in politics so that you will not be governed by your inferiors. No rule by them. So with that being said, I cannot thank you enough from the bottom of my heart. Happy Easter, happy Passover.